Hi there, this is Laura from Teacup Lion, and I'm going to show you how to embroider a mouth on. So what I have here is the safety eyes and nose. They're not attached at the backings yet. So I just made holes with small scissors and my awl, just so I can have a placement and something to help me work with. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. So maybe you want a happy mouth, sad mouth, decide it first before um, you actually start stitching. And you'll want to draw the lines with a uh, fabric pen. So this one is temporary. It will disappear with water or air over time. Um, you might want to pick a reference picture on your computer to help you decide. Uh, pugs, for example, have a sad, grumpy mouth. Um, I'm trying to make a bull terrier so he's a little nervous and scared, so I might make just a, a very small, timid, sad mouth. So just trace the lines on. Make sure they're even. You can use a mirror to help you decide that. When you're ready, get your embroidery floss. You can use uh, brown on white fabrics. It'll give it like a more smooth look than a black, which will look more harsh. And when you start stitching, you can stitch either into the eye hole or the nose hole. So I'm just going to start in the nose hole and stitch into the bottom of the mouth here. So the order in which you stitch the mouth doesn't really matter as long as you just get the lines correct eventually. So because I'm starting here, the knot is going to be inside the fabric right here. I wouldn't really want the knot too close. Oh, forgot to knot it. <laughs> you wouldn't want the knot too close um, to the hole in case the hole um, rips a little bit, your knot might pop through. So try to keep it a little bit away from the hole. So the extra threads, I'm just going to poke them inside. Eh, leave it alone for now. So next I can either stitch to the side or stitch up. I'm just going to stitch up and then, ah, no, no, I'll stitch into the side. So into this corner. Now when I put the needle into this line, I have to remember that the actual thread on the outside is going to be a little bit shorter than what this line draws is, is drawn to. So I'm going to stitch maybe a millimeter or two past the line so that it goes the full width. And then when I bring the needle out on the other side, I'm going to also make the needle come out one to two millimeters past the actual draw line. This does take some trial and error. What you can do before putting the needle through is testing. Wrap the thread around, see what it'll look like. Now that's not quite the angle that I was hoping for. The threads will be slightly higher because they're placed on the upper edge of the needle. So maybe I will instead stitch lower than my drawn lines. The nice part about hand embroidery is if you make a stitch and change your mind, you can start over. Sometimes I'm actually able to pull the needle in reverse through the hole that I stitched. If not, it's no biggie. Thread's not that expensive. So you notice that the thread kind of tangles as you pull it down. I like to have another needle handy so I can control it. I keep the two threads flat on this side so that as I pull with my left hand, the tangled threads come through and these threads stay straight. So as I finish, I can just ease it down with the needle. Now I have a nice untwisted set of threads there. Okay, so this looks good. I'm going to stitch into the center. If you stitch into the past threads, 
like uh, in between the two threads, it's actually going to separate the threads with this new set of threads. So you don't want to do that. You want to make sure that the stitches are either right in the same hole or right next to them. If, it's, if your stitch in is too far away from this initial stitch, you'll have a slight gap. But with furry fabrics, it's, it's not too much of an issue. The fur nap will hide it. Stitch in. And I'm going to stitch out at the nose hole because I want to make a line along the center. If you're having trouble pulling the needle through, use pliers. It'll save your hands a great deal of pain. Pull through. Use my needle to ease the threads down. And regarding how tight you pull, you want to pull tightly enough so that the threads don't move around too much, but if you pull too tightly, the fabric will pucker like so, and you won't be able to see it. So if you pull too tightly, just use a needle and pull at the fabric to sort of relieve the tension there. So I'm going to make one last stitch straight down, and I'm going to stitch into just above these last two stitches here. If we stitch below them, it'll sort of pull them up a bit more, and I don't really want to change the shape of the mouth that I have going on here. Stitch straight down. And then wherever you stitch out next is where you will be tying the knot for the mouth. So if you're using a very small nose, you probably don't want to end it under the nose. If you have larger eyes, then that's a better place to end the threads. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. You can use pliers if you have to. Make sure not to stab yourself. <laughs> my threads even, and the needle's easier than my fingers. Okay, so last bits, I'm using this needle to sort of push the fabric outwards to control the tension of these threads. I'm just going to clip these, those are inside the fabric anyway. So I have this, which came out right next to the eye hole. If you're not sure if you've stitched out at the eye hole itself, or um, right next to the eye hole, you can always make a really small stitch to sort of secure those threads. For this plush, I was actually going to use a large nose. So what I could have done was finish the threads on the inside of the fabric and tied a knot and uh, just clipped the extra threads there, but I just wanted to show you what it's like for this video to stitch out at an eye. So I've looped it, clipping, and I'm just going to do one knot. I haven't had problems with the strength. When I usually do a double knot with uh, any thread that is silky or soft, the second knot actually can come undone. Clip the extra thread. You can use fray check if you want to, ex to place extra strength on that knot. So that is a cute little mouth. And if you wanted to add a curve, this is the direction that you would want. You could have done two extra stitches to get that curve, or you can use regular thread and still make that curve happen. I'm just going to pick this light blue. So I'm going to pretend that I already knotted this. Um, stitch, oh, 
first you want to get your pin and pull down the mouth thread to where you want the curve to be. When you sew in, you're going to stitch at that pin, make sh making sure not to capture the floss. Pull the pin out, wrap the needle around the black embroidery floss, and you see that grabs it. And then you can anchor it down by stitching once more to the face fabric. I'm just exiting over here because I'm showing for this purposes. I'd normally make the other side of the mouth over here. So you can see it pulls it, pulls it into whatever shape you want it to get to. I hope you found this mouth embroidery video helpful with your sewing. If you'd like to check out this pattern, it is the teacup puppy pattern in my Etsy shop. You can click on the link here. Thanks for watching. Hope this helps your sewing.